Hey, what's good, y'all? Fusion here, back with another reaction video. Uh, today, we're going to be reacting to some NBA Today uh, shams. Talking about Clay Thompson. Uh, the Mavs are playing the Warriors. Um, it's his comeback uh, to Oracle. So, I, I, I guess that'll be interesting. Um, Clay has done a lot for the Warriors. That's just how it is. Four time NBA champ five-time all-star he was very very important in every single warriors run and i believe his number should be retired that being said <laughs> towards the end of his warriors uh career he, he definitely um he played bad shot selection was terrible it seemed like he was forcing a lot of shots. Uh, defensively, he regressed. Of course, injuries, um, certain things, uh, new players, just whatever the case may be. That stuff does have an impact. But at the end of the day, he did regress and play worse. That's just how it was. I don't know why the trade happened. I mean, uh, not the trade. I don't know why he left uh, Golden State. I don't know if it was... Issues internally, not enough money they're paying them, uh, coaches, whatever the fuck happened, he left, now we're here. The Warriors are looking better than they have in the past few years since Clay, since Clay Thompson left. Buddy Hill is doing the Clay Thompson role better than Clay Thompson off the bench. That's a fact. That's something I've stated previously in other videos. Um, it sort of makes you think. The first three NBA championships that the Warriors won, I do think Klay Thompson was very, very important in those roles. After that, question... Could any other two-way player be in that Klay Thompson role and they still win? Paul George. Could Paul George be in that role and they still win? Just a thought. I personally like Klay Thompson. I wish he would have went to the, uh, to the Lakers. I think um, him being that two-guard that plays both sides of the ball... Um, a vet, someone who has experience winning. Um, I don't think he'll have a huge role, but if he gives the Lakers 15, 16 points a game, that's exactly what we need. But him going to the Mavs, it, it makes sense. Uh, you play with Luka, uh, you play with Kyrie, uh, you have two players who are ball-dominant guys, and in Klay Thompson's prime, quote-unquote, he could play and be effective without the ball. He knows how to get into positions. He he, he knows how to get himself um, good open looks. Um, he knows how to play off screens, with screens, without screens. He knows how to play with stars. He's played with multiple stars before. He is one of those players that you could fit him on many, many teams as long as his ego doesn't, as long as his ego doesn't get involved. And I think towards the end of his Warriors uh, get, uh, run, he sort of let his ego get in. So that, in my opinion, was the issue with Clay Thompson towards the end of that Warriors run. I'm just glad to see him really uh, being himself, being willing to just get what he gets, quote unquote, that's the type of player or type of, I think, offensive style that fits him well. It's the, I'll get the open shot or I'll get a shot just whenever it comes to me. And if Luka can feed into that, if Luka can find him during the playoffs when um, he does drive and get a kick out, this Mavs team will be even better than they have been. Um, so, yeah, those are my quick thoughts on this uh but let's go ahead and get started see what other guys say here
people that you grinded with, obviously. But uh, to me, it's just another regular season game in November. Obviously, there's bigger implications with the NBA Cup. So uh, that's what's on our mind, is in my mind, is just to win that because I haven't been a part of it yet. I know it's young, but uh, it'd be fun to play for that title. So I think to understand how Clay Thompson is approaching this game, we need to understand where he's sort of coming from here, how things devolved with the Golden State Warriors, Shams. Quick pause. Uh, personally, when it comes to, um, I've said this before, certain games are statement games. Not every game is the same. Not every game holds the same amount of weight. Yeah, this is the NBA Cup, but even beyond that, even beyond the NBA Cup, there's other implications in certain games. This is one of those games. This is a statement game. If you play um, 2K, this would be considered a key game. There's multiple key games for every, every team. When you're in the West, most Western Conference teams, Matchups are key games and statement games because you will be seeing them probably the most in your um, just like throughout the season. Mavs and Warriors, especially this year, I feel like are very competitive and this could be Western Conference final-esque battle. There could be a a world where these two teams are in the Western Conference Finals, especially this season, especially how the Warriors have been playing. So this is a time where, or the Mavs can make a statement and be like, hey, we're here. Or the Warriors can make this statement and be like, we are back. We are the team to beat in the West again. We are back to the best team in the West. That's why I sort of disagree on what Klay Thompson is saying. Of course, he's an NBA player. I am a <laughs> mid-high school player. So, of course, he may have have, have way more weight um, on that. But hindsight, but basketball knowledge, but outside perspective, this is a key and important a um, statement game for them. At the end in Golden State, both from an on-court role, we know he was in and out of the starting lineup. Yeah. He felt like a little bit of disrespect about how that ended, and then it didn't go the way he wanted from a contractual perspective as well. He was eligible for an extension. The Warriors offered him a two-year $48 million deal that at that point, I'm told, he felt like he deserved more years, more money, and they never could agree to terms. And really by June, everything I heard was Klay Thompson was ready to move on from the Warriors. It was just about where he was going to end up, and Dallas gave him everything he wanted. They told him he was the missing piece. They told him you're going to play 30 minutes a night. They're going to play him. You're guaranteed as a starter for this team. They told him everything and made him feel comfortable and confident and respected in ways that he did not feel in Dallas. And honestly, I've, I've done a lot of uh, talking to people around Clay and yeah. around the situation. And I, I think he would rather win tonight, win a championship with the, with the Dallas Mavericks, prove the Warriors wrong in a lot of ways, than even talk or think about his legacy re right now. He's more concerned about winning a championship with the Mavericks yeah. winning tonight and proving everyone wrong. But again, reality is not always. Uh, so just to keep, there's a few things that I do want to touch on here. Um, especially with the Warriors and the Clay Thompson conversation. I really didn't look into it. I felt like it was time for that Warriors team to blow up. I personally thought that it was Draymond who was going to leave and not Clay Thompson, but it is what it is. Um, that being said, Clay Thompson at that time was playing bad. He was not a starter. He was having, um, he was doing six man style gameplay. Very Jordan Poole tendency esque gameplay. He's going, taking horrible shots, horrible shot selection, breaking up plays when they didn't need to. Um, body language was sort of negative there were times where you'd watch clay thompson and be like is that clay or is that that other fat nigga that was playing clay in that uh on that one youtube video where he where he uh snuck in and was clay thompson 
Is he? Is he out there? There were times where you were questioning. Is he done? Is Clay Thompson washed? There's a moment in an NBA player's a career, and again, I am speaking from an outside perspective, from a high school perspective, from someone who watches basketball and who has a pretty good a pretty good grasp on um, basketball player um, ceiling and uh, how far that they should go and how far that they will go. Russell Westbrook was in the same spot as Klay Thompson was when he was on the Warriors. Russ, uh, well, when Russ was on the Lakers, he had the same type of style. He had to come off the bench. He wasn't getting as much ball touches. And he definitely wasn't getting paid as much as he used to. But the difference is, of course, like the Lakers, that didn't pan out well, but... Russell Westbrook was like, okay, I'll take less money. I'll come off the bench. I'll be that bench spark. I'll be that vet. I'll be that guy who, um, if you need an extra body just to be out there to get a foul or to get some numbers, yes, Russ did still put up numbers. He'll still be Russ at, at, at the um, end of the day. But he knew he was not the focal point or the second option or the third option anymore. Clay Thompson didn't realize that until it was way too late. There were times in that during that Warriors season where Jonathan Kaminga should have been the second option. And Clay Thompson was a reluctant to give that up. And because of that, there was turmoil, I'm sure, because of that, Clay Thompson felt disrespected. The Warriors felt like there was a disconnect on where they were going. Eventually, they did split part. Uh, did part ways. I don't know why I said split part. That's not... I don't know what the fuck I said. Anyway, I believe that's what happened. And I believe that's why Klay Thompson is thinking this. I'm trying to prove everybody wrong. Because he doesn't want to be that, that Russell Westbrook style of character or player. He doesn't want to accept the role of being that spark or that veteran presence on that team. He just doesn't. Always like that because yeah. when he's there tonight, I think a lot of people with the Warriors feel like he will feel it finally when he gets that. However they honor him, he really... We'll see how he's going to react, but I'm very curious. Joe Lakin's going to be sitting uh, courtside. Uh, th there's going to be a lot of moments for Clay Thompson to have his moments with, with, with people. Yeah, I think reality is going to set in uh, eventually. Danny, you've actually played in a return yeah. game where you've had to, to go back. What a game. Oh, I think I was 0 for 7. I didn't make a shot. I heard Clay. Sorry about that. Uh, I heard my alarm go off probably, but um, I don't give a fuck what Danny Green has to say. Danny Green um, did exactly what Klay Thompson did and didn't accept his role. And now look at this nigga sitting right next to Sean. So sort of disregard what he has to say. That's why I sort of uh, respect Kendrick Perkins, his role for that Celtics team, for that uh, Cleveland team, for his short stint was to be an extra body, set screens, be a defending big man, get in the way, um, I think he would be a good person to match up with, of course, when he was younger and and healthy, with Jokic. Someone who can body him, someone who can be in his uh, airspace, maybe not stop him, but be another good body to put in front of him, to be there um, and be effective. So, he understood his role. Kendrick Perkins understood what his role was on that Oklahoma City team and on that Cavs team with Braun. And once he got older, he understood what was happening. These two, Danny Green and Clay Thompson, don't. And I'm sure at one point, maybe last year, Danny Green... With, uh, without a shadow of a, do uh, of a doubt, felt like he could 
realistically uh, provide NBA minutes and contributions, which isn't true. So that's why that I just went ahead and skipped over Dan Green because he's basically talking about himself here. Play, say leading up into this huge game for him to return back to Golden State. I've heard it before. Where? My sister <laughs> actually uh... had a similar situation, but you know, not when it comes to teams not really wanting or making great offers. My sister had a great offer <laughs> to go back to the Los Angeles Sparks. She was with them for 12 years, but she decided to go to the Seattle Storm. And when she went to Seattle, she had to play the Sparks in the preseason. Mm -hmm. And I remember going into that game, because I'm a little sis, I was always her, I'm always her hype woman. And going into that matchup, I basically was like, Neca, like you're playing the Sparks right. a lot. She's like, no, 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 it's just another game. It's okay, it's preseason. But when she went and played, I knew it was a little bit more difficult than what she led off. Right. And I think as athletes, you compartmentalize things to be able to perform but some things are just a lot going back to a place that was home my sister won one championship with the sparks he has won four with golden state so you can say all those words those emotions are going to come back my sister was grateful that it was preseason because when it came right, to regular get, season get those, she got that, them that buckets let me tell you that first time that first matchup she got buckets but for clay it's a different scenario but i do feel like it's the same emotions and when you say when you don't acknowledge them sometimes it doesn't really help you you were there you were an icon this was a dynasty. When you let yourself feel that, then it feels like you're already ready for that environment. So I'm wishing him the best. I hope that he embraces it. Cause yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, again, there's only a certain amount of this that I can really speak to. And to be frank, uh, for you guys to really like see it and for you to take me serious. I'm not an NBA player. I'm not a great basketball player. My role in high school was to play defense, get rebounds, set screens, block shots, and maybe hit a mid-range jumper every so often. That was my role. So I understand that. But this is a different game. NBA players, and I think that sort of... Uh, Is a de is the detriment. It sort of makes it worse for them. You gotta accept that this is going to be a different game. If you can't accept that, then you can be like, okay, I'm going to prepare differently or the same. I believe you should not um, prepare for every single game the same. Personally. Example, there was a, this guy that I, I played against. He was way, way taller than me. He was 6'6". Six, six. I'm 6'2". Six, you know, I'm pretty athletic, but at the end of the day, I'm 6'2". So I understand I'm going to have to be physical and front this guy so he does not get the ball in the post and easily score up on me. So I mentally prepare myself. Hey, he's going to be bigger than me. He's going to be trying to get on that block and set up i'm going to front him and do my best to be physical and to stop him from getting the ball force him and force uh bad passes so my teammate can help me that's what i'm gonna do when i'm playing against a shooting guy i'm going to get into his chest and force him to put the ball on the floor and get around me different game different mindset different way i will prepare when it's a game like i'm playing against a team that i left a team that uh i feel like there's some animosity with you should accept that you should not beat around the bush and be like there is nothing that i'm going to feel because i think it's going to make you play worse you got to accept the feeling embrace it use it i don't think you should accept the feeling or don't even accept the feeling at all and just avoid it i don't think that's what you should do that's going to be a detriment personally um we got a few more minutes i haven't heard what kendrick perkins has to say let's go ahead and hear what he has to say real quick uh, before i do end the video at the end of the day when you're dumb <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be smoking now look are they gonna <laughs> give clay a tribute video absolutely right? and they should May is he he might share the tear, go and hug Draymond and stuff. Absolutely. And he should. See 
the people around the arena that he's known probably for years and the people in the organization, absolutely. But when they get between those lines, right, Clay is going to want to bust the Warriors ass. And he should. going to want to bust Clay ass, period, point blank. I feel like, you know, when you think about last season and you think about what all transpired, Clay going to the bench, seeing these, seeing him be emotional and frustrated at times. Yeah. This was actually a, a bad breakup. Let's be real here. This was a bad breakup. Like, it, the way that it ended, it didn't end well. And Clay is saying what he feels right now. And what he feels is, is that he wants, Chimes just said it, he wants to prove to the Warriors that basically they took him for granted. Because what did he sign with the Dallas Mavericks? Like three year, 50 million? Something like that, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, so they was, uh, oh, okay, so they gave him two to three million dollars extra than what the <laughs> Golden State Warriors offered them. Yeah, so it was really just he was running a completely different role and I think he wanted out. Question. And I think this is something that always does happen to come up when discussing um, the Warriors and when the Warriors do something wrong involving players. Should should uh, should, should Steph Curry have gotten involved here? Should Steph Curry have talked to Klay Thompson? Maybe work some shit out. Hey, I'll take a pay cut here. Or, hey, I'll just stick it out one more year and then I'll talk to him. Should there have been a leadership conversation from the leader of your team? Just a thought. I don't think... Um, I do think at some point, Clay Thompson did feel like he was less than and realized it and just left and moved on, which is great. But could the leader of the team have done something? We've seen opposite. We've seen leaders uh, influence and keep players and um, bring players into their team. And I've seen players keep players. Star players be able to reel in their, their Robin or their uh, second, third option back. Steph Curry hasn't done that. Kevin Durant left. Clay Thompson left. Chris Paul left. Again, it's just an observation. I personally like Steph. I think that the leadership conversation is a hard conversation to have because there's multiple times in the NBA where... Um, Standards are different for everybody. Because there's a conversation to be had with LeBron James leadership. When a good, when a teammate uh, performs bad and then they leave and go to a, a completely different team and then they end up playing better. There's, I think there's a conversation to be had there. I do think it is a very nuanced one though. So some point I would like to talk about that. Um, leave a comment down below um, if you would like to hear my perspective on that. Um, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Who do you think is going to be winning tonight? I personally still got the Warriors. Um, I do think that the Warriors are a... Um, they're riding on consistency and a momentum right now. I think that the Warriors will play better against Klay Thompson than Klay Thompson plays against the Warriors. Yeah, I think I just got the Warriors. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you. Uh, we're hitting a, we're gonna be do, do, doing a stream at seven fifty. So make sure you do sub and uh, look out for that. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that link in the description down below to become a member. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.